Mother felt out of place with this bunch. He had been bouncing at a club in Cabo when everything went to shit. The phones were out, so he couldn't reach his sister or her family in California. Until recently. Now every other bad decision Nestor had made over the course of his fifty-one years on Earth paled to insignificance next to the biggest gaffe of his life. To the uninitiated, these categories might sound confusing and nebulous, so let me break it down for you. Contrary to what you might be thinking, ashy blondes aren't ashy in that they need to apply lotion, the more common use of ashy as a descriptor. All over the south of England, on the night of the 5th of June, people awoke, or else if they were going late to bed, stopped what they were doing and went outside to listen. Those who had lived there for the past four years were used to noisy nights. The noise at nights had changed through the years, from the distinctive beat of German bombers and the din of air raids to the sound of British bombers outward bound at dusk and homeward bound at dawn. During my early twenties, when I had the freedom to visit whenever I pleased, I took any chance I could get to wander among these skeletons and imagine flesh on their bones. And as I strolled through those halls, the floors scuffed by the feet of so many youngsters on their first trips into the presence of dinosaurs, what I missed most was the dim, dusty, Jurassic dinosaur hall that I encountered so many years before. Half a dozen plastic crates filled with garden vegetables were crammed into the back of the ship, but Scarlet hardly saw them. She was miles away in Toulouse, planning the conversation in her head. With a solid, thundering crunch, Jack's foot landed against the wall of a Swift Trade Securities branch's trading floor as he systematically progressed through his extensive arsenal of every known curse word in the English language, in stark contrast to the soft-spoken business speak on the CNBC and ROB TV commentary originating from the mounted television sets. She grabbed me by the hand and yanked me up the walk, Koki tipped his hat to me. I smiled and waved back. The shears in the front window shifted, covering a shadowy figure lit by an amber glow behind the glass. I asked how she knew that, and she said, He wrote a book called Candy, and it's a dirty, dirty book. Again, I asked how she knew all this, and she said, Because my parents told me they have it on their bookshelf. If you've taken the time and the effort to open this page, chances are you're one of them. You know who you are. You're a tortured, teased, and tantalized New York Jets fan. You've endured a lifetime of disappointment with only a speckle of joy sprinkled in. When they snapped Nigel out of the ambulance and into the hospital, he was told he was going into some section reserved for non-emergency accident cases. He was not evidently in so very bad a shape as one might expect of a man who had recently celebrated his 60th birthday and survived a car wreck. It is said that during times of immense fear, shock, or heartache, your body does weird things. And I'm here to say it's true. Why? Because I endured all three of those emotions as I stood in front of the head of the netherworld, a double-dealing bastard who'd been importing illegal potions from the netherworld to Earth for Hades only knew how long. You look as though you swallowed a toad, my roommate said. I glanced up from my email. Eva watched me in the warped glass of our cheap mirror, where she stood smudging on wine-dark lipstick. She'd already carefully layered for the evening, belting a red cardigan over a short black and white dress. I wore one of her cast-offs, a slinky green thing she swore brought out my eyes. A lean and sun-browned man slithers in the shallows as easily as an eel after fry, till he draws his legs under and stands taller than the first organisms walking out of the sea, but with original intent, to improve his niche on land. I am also a traveler poet, having gone as far as the Arctic Circle, the fjords of New Zealand's South Island, and the furthest tributaries of the Amazon River in search of poems, though more recently I have been exploring an area much closer to home. 1962 is often considered the last year of American innocence. It is a label likely attached more for what took place the following year, the assassination of a United States president. In the early 1980s, my mother, Mavis Becker, was a widow living quietly in West Seattle on the money she earned from part-time work and Social Security checks. She had raised six children. And not counting Canada, she had traveled outside of the country only once in her life, to Ireland with our father just before he died.